Hi, everybody. Recruiting Animal here on July 24, 24, 2024. Okay. Now, I was reading LinkedIn this morning. And this guy said, if you want to be successful, here's the key. You have to do what other people are afraid to do, okay? Nod your head. I want to know you heard me, okay? And, and, and refra- afraid to do? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of sex. So I said to myself, what are recruiters afraid to do? Nothing came to mind for me right away, okay? You're with me? Uh-huh. Okay. Then I read an article in the New York Times. Okay. You can sneeze here. I don't care. I can cut it out. Okay, and the article was about Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House for the Democrats in Mm -hmm. the American Congress. She was uh, she's 84 years old. When she was 80, she stepped down, but she's still in Congress. Okay, Joe Biden, it said, and his top aides, not just him. They were convinced he was the man to beat Trump in November. He was committed to running. He wasn't going to let anybody except God himself make him step aside. But in the meantime, Nancy Pelosi was organizing behind the scenes. She was talking to her network. She would get these different uh, politicians, donors, and party leaders bit by bit on a graduated basis to go public and tell Joe, hey, we like you, but it's time for you to step aside, okay? And Mm -hmm. then when people were doing it behind the scenes, big donors and stuff like that as well, she would leak that stuff to the news, to the media, right? Okay. So it was really clear in the end that the party was against Joe Biden, and he all of a sudden had to step aside, even though he said he wouldn't, and it was clear that he resented. He let it be known that he resented it, okay? Are you with me? I'm with you. I had a revelation. That's what recruiters are afraid of. Recruiters are afraid to deliver bad news. I agree with you 100%. Let me give you the example. Hi, Sasha. So, you know, you get, you recruit somebody, you you want to curry favor with them and and, uh, pull them into the, uh, into the search. And, uh, you know, you get them excited about your job. Then you send them out uh, when they're all, you know, panting to get that offer. And you have to go back and tell them, hey, the hiring manager doesn't want you. Okay. So the article I read about Nancy Pelosi said that she was, uh, ruthless. Uh, I can't remember unapologetically ruthless. And she didn't care if people didn't like her, if she wasn't likable and a recruiter has to be like that too. You don't want to make an enemy, but she was not afraid to have the president of the United States resent her and not like her. I bet you're not. He's, she's not on the top of his like, uh, so, these days. Let me finish. Go ahead. So a recruiter has to tell the candidate, you know what? You're not in, okay? And if the candidate chooses to resent it, I can't care. You don't care if they like you, okay? And you have to be unapologetic, unafraid, unashamed, okay? When you deliver negative <laughs> messages, okay? Are you with me? Go ahead. You, you uh, respond. Yes. The, 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 I, what you say is 100% true. I would just say how you do it is also important too. Like, you don't want to burn bridges. You don't want to be an asshole. You want to be unapologi- unapologetically yeah, honest. Yeah. Well, hey, Joe Biden, honest, unapologetic. Unapologetically um, honest, but you don't have to be an asshole. You don't have to be no, a jerk. It wasn't right? unapologetically and, honest. It was ruthlessly unapologetic. Fine. But you you have to like look at it and say, okay, I'm going to tell you something or I'm going to do something that some people are not going to like, but is the right thing to do in my brain, right? This candidate, you don't have the qualifications. You shouldn't work for this company. You're not good enough. And here are the reasons why, right? You can be civil about it. You can be polite and, and you know, and have empathy when you do it. So, but I agree 100%. You just have to make sure you're not doing it in a way that you come off as an asshole. You come off as a jerk. And, well, how do you, you come off as an asshole? Look into the camera. Don't look at the ground, okay? So so I would say you come off as an asshole when you're, when you're you know, an, I mean, I, an asshole. I'm not an asshole, right? I'm not going to tell a candidate. Hey, you just don't got it. You know, stop leaving me alone or whatever. You have to you have to have so empathy to the person. You can't think of it as like a transaction. You have to think of it more of like, okay, what if it was me? And then tell the candidate why they're not good for the position. You can't or tell just, them why. 99% of the time you can't tell them why. You okay, yes, you can. Whether they believe you or not is different. But if I say to a candidate, look, I'm sorry, but this position doesn't suit you, and here are the reasons why. 
I have this. I have a call a guy today to tell him why he's not number one. He's going to have to take the number two slot in the company. And I'm going to tell him, but I'm going to be empath empathetic about it. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to start with all the positives of what he's got and how he's good at what he does. But these are the reasons why you'll never be able to take the number one spot. And whether, and if he wants to, if he wants to get hired for the number two spot, great. If he doesn't, I, nothing I can do to prevent that, but I have to be empathetic about it. I have to be fair about it. And I have to tell him the truth. I don't want to, you know, you know, uh, sell him a pig in a poke just because I don't want my feelings hurt or I don't want to hurt his feelings or I don't want him to be mad at me. You're no yeah, matter how long you're doing this, people thing. hate you. And here's the important thing. Your internal feelings, you can't feel bad. If you're psychologically well adjusted, you don't care. If you don't like me. No, that's not true. Candidate, I, I, no, don't, I no, don't I don't care. I don't care. I don't Go ahead, hate me. I don't hurt care. people's feelings. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I don't want people to be sad to, because of what I tell them. It. But I'm still going to tell them that, right? It's okay to, sit, to feel bad telling Joe he's not getting the job, right? It's okay, but you can't let that affect you, number one. And number two, you can't stop. You can't let it stop you from telling him the truth. If, if you don't have that empathy, if you don't have empathy, there's something wrong with you. No, if you don't, if you feel bad, okay, you're not going to be able to do this job very long, okay? And you're not somebody who feels bad about bugging people or, you know, no, I feel bad when I have to, I feel sorry for him. He, the guys that really want the job. I, feel, I, 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 I empathize with them. Right. If I didn't get a job, I, you know, it's like, it, like, dude, I, I'm sorry. I, it, that sucks for you. I'm so, you know, I empathize with them. Right. Is, is that feeling bad? I don't know. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't change. How long does it me. affect you after you get off the phone? 60 seconds. If that, <laughs> but I still, but I still, I still empathize with them, right? I still understand. Yeah, while the you're pain. on the phone, yeah, but okay. If guys like you are are strong personalities. You don't feel bad about that. If you, when you were a bartender and you had to kick somebody out, hey, uh, I don't different. Feel They're being an asshole. They're being an asshole. That's different. If I have to kick everybody out at two, at its last call. And somebody's like, oh, I'm waiting for a girl or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to feel bad. I have to throw that guy out because his girlfriend hadn't showed up or whatever. But if it's, someone's an asshole, I don't ever feel bad for that, right? When I was a bartender and a bouncer, if you were an asshole, that there was no bad feelings there. And that's okay. the same with a candidate. If candidate's an asshole, then, yeah, definitely not going to feel bad. Okay. But if it's a good candidate, yeah, I'll feel, I'll feel I'm sorry for the guy. I'm going to throw something in his face right now. But Sasha, Go ahead. Sasha, before I do, if you want to say something, you're welcome to speak up. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm following the subject. Okay, because you look like a shadow. You have no, you're, 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 your light is behind you. That's okay. Chris, you click on the three little dots. I'm asking what type of camera you use. I bought a new camera, and I started using it, but it's shit quality. Sasha, okay, click, click on the three camera, little dots. Your light source. You have no light click source. On the three, click on the three little dots okay. on the very bottom, and click okay. adjust video lighting and, and uh, styles, and you can change the, the light appearance yeah it'll okay. brighten it up a bit for you yeah go to back go to um it go to uh yeah you can cut this out animal like uh apply visual effects you can cut this out animal it does take me a half an hour to find that exact there's backgrounds spot. filters and appearance background and click on appearance and then go to framing okay. and adjust video lighting framing adjust video lighting turn so. adjust video lighting on there you go yeah That's maybe better go. <laughs> a little bit thank different. you you're welcome okay okay go ahead throw it in my face animal. okay I'm i have another I, i'm not even looking i know what's in there you just reminded me okay there's somebody asked a question how do you and this is particularly of interest to you because of what you told us about what your clients generally look for in a candidate how do you tell a candidate that he or she is rejected because they don't have any charisma okay you told us that your clients generally like lively people okay so what i'm not happy. going to tell a candidate they don't have charisma because that's not something that they can change especially in the engineers that i deal with if you are not an outgoing engineer and, and you happen to get by me and i get you an interview that's bad on me but if the client says look he just doesn't have the charisma and the out he's not outgoing he doesn't have the he doesn't look us in the eye type of thing I'm not going to tell him that. I may say something like, well, you interviewed well, but they found someone they like just a little bit better because okay. he's never going to get a job that requires charisma. Okay. So you just contradicted yourself. Oh, yeah. I tell them the reason. No, you don't. Okay. Animal, what have you, Rich and I have told you a hundred times. There is no black and white. It's everything is, it's nothing as steadfast rule. 
There's exceptions to every rule. Why do you not get that through your brain? I have a witness here, Sasha. He said, I always tell them, I tell them, no, no, no. I never say they have no charisma. You're a wet noodle and you'll never get hired because you're I wake up and brush my teeth. You know what happens sometimes? I forget. Are you calling me a liar because I say I wake up every morning and brush my teeth? Uh, I think that's different. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, I think that's different. Anyway, I so would like I, to present uh, the bronze I, medal I, for gymnastics. To... <laughs> I I want to just say something that I don't care if you are a, a diehard Republican and you're going to vote for Trump. If you take a look at what Nancy Pelosi did, that's still an example of someone doing their duty with courage and we have to be like that okay it doesn't i agree i just no yeah, yeah no disagreement with me either way i mean yeah yeah you, but if you do the pressure, hard things if you feel pressure doing those things your job's going to be miserable okay it's, yeah it's going to be a lot harder if you aren't willing to make hard decisions uncomfortable decisions and unpopular decisions Yes, your job is going no, to be, I don't making, care what the job is. You're not making the decision. You're delivering the message, okay? Yeah. Now, here's something else that I'll tell you, though. You know your field so well that perhaps you can understand why your hiring manager doesn't uh, want your candidate. But if a candidate comes to me, uh, you know, the hiring manager gives me actually gives me some feedback, and the, I tell the candidate, the candidate starts debating it with me. I don't know anything. I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not an IT professional. I, I What can I say? Look like an idiot. Well, I, I don't know. I went by some buzzwords. You seemed right. They interviewed you, but I can't, I can't give, you know, debate it with you. So here's the thing. This is going to sound uh, braggadocious, but my send out the inter interview placement ratio is very low. And the candidates that don't get hired, it's something that I didn't miss really. It's something that either they did or they said in the interview that I have no problem telling them. I have, I can tell you right now, this is 100%. In the last three years, I have never had a client said he's not qualified. So I, I, I know how to qualify my candidates. It will be just things told us that you have to tell somebody they're not for the top job. Hey, hey, Billy. I, 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 that's not about qualifications. That's about stuff like charisma or whatever it is. And, and, and the one I'm telling you about is, is I don't want to go into a long ass story, but I even preempted the client by saying, this guy's really good. I don't think he'll be the VP you're looking for in the next five to seven years. I told him that when they interviewed this guy. And he says, well, we'll evaluate him because he does look great on paper. I said, look, he's got all the qualifications. I don't think he, and I even said, I don't think he has the charisma and the education to, to level himself up to the VP position in the next three to five years. Why'd you present him? Because he's good for now, right? Because I have two positions open. I have an A and a B, right? I have a plant manager and a VP of ops, right? Or actually, it's a it's a it's a assistant plant manager and a vice and, a, and an operations manager, and one of them can become the VP of ops, right? Most okay. likely, the so second you guy. You went in. You you presented this person knowing that he would probably be projected, rejected. Not no, he's not rejected. He's rejected only for the the top position, not the, the bottom okay, position. Yeah, okay. He's rejected. Yeah. yeah. You know, look how he's quibbling with everything. No, I no but I mean, they're going to hire the guy still, right? That's why I said this is hard That's to explain the job in want a three minutes. It? Is that the job he wants? Not the job he wants, but it's the job he's going to take. Okay. Because he wants to work for the company. And, and he understands you? that he does not have what they're looking for to be that guy, but he might get there one day and they're willing to bring him on and train him. How did, Again, how did you tell him that uh, this wet noodle, that he doesn't have what it takes? Basically, you know, for they you to elevate, for you to elevate to the next level, you're missing the ex the direct industry experience, and we knew that going in. But also the ability to lead a team. You did very poorly when asked questions like, "How do you reduce turnover? How do you keep a team motivated?" And with those missing those components, plus the direct industry experience, it's going to be very hard for you to even elevate to the number one position, let alone the VP of ops in the next three to five years. However, all your other experience is very relative to the team. Your leadership is, ma is relevant, amazing. Not relative, relevant. Okay. I'm just. I said relevant. I said relevant. No, you said relative, and it's okay, to the team. And so they, they still want to move forward to you to, to the assistant plant manager or possibly just plant manager when they get the VP of ops in place. Okay, I mean, you're you're a regular like Nancy Pelosi telling the guy, look, you don't have it. You did poorly in those questions. What am I supposed to? I mean, I could tell him, uh, we'll find you something else. 
but they want to hire him. So I got to be honest with them. I got to tell them why. Okay. And so you don't think he resents that when he goes into the company? Not anymore. I mean, he's, he's, he's on board. He's, he's, he's had okay. a conversation with me and a conversation with the employer after, you know, we both let him down. Now let me speak directly. Okay. I mm -hmm. told you, to, I told you to adjust your, your sound and you did. And I was really appreciated, but still a little, it's a little too loud now. Can you turn it down just a little? Well, I'm kind of loud. So. Okay. Well, I talk to you almost every week. I know what your sound is. Don't make excuses. Okay. Is that better? Is that better? No. Okay. I won't bug you about it. Is that it, better? Okay? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Yeah, I guess so. Is that better? Is that yeah, better? Yeah, is that better? Yeah, is that better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, he's resenting me. He says he doesn't. I'm not resenting you. you. I'm, I'm, I'm is that better? Is that better? Sure is that better? That yeah. I adjust my microphone to uh, to uh, easy animal. Does anybody else have an issue they want? That was a pressing issue. I think it was. I think that was a very interesting story. Okay. Uh, I know I posted it on my Facebook group today and I know people are going to say, Oh, he's a rabble rouser. He just wants to stir up anything. Who? They, they always accuse me. I said it before, you know, if I put anything, an example from politics, Oh, he's, he's just trying to get people, you know, it's, a, it's clickbait. No, it isn't clickbait. Everybody. That was a relevant, profound story. Okay. Anybody want to talk? Oh, Tom, I have a question for you while you're here. Okay. You ready? Yep. Yep. Okay. You posted, and I took your advice. You said, this is your words. Did I need you... to go. It was nice seeing you. You too, Sasha. Bye, Bye. Sasha. Take care. Okay, you learned something today. She learned how to, to adjust her, her terrible <laughs> visual presentation. Okay. Tom said, did you all know there is a Facebook group that you can buy and sell AppSumo lifetime deals on. If people don't know it, AppSumo.com, A-P-P-S-U-M-O, uh, companies that have new software, they put it up there cheap to get people excited about it and establish a, a base. And uh, I, I've bought some stuff there, but Tom is a real aficionado. I joined that group and I, I don't get it. They don't seem to be offering uh, good deals there on that group. They're not, they're not good deals. They are deals that were good. You didn't buy them, and now you want them, and they no longer exist. Or if you sign up for them on their website, you have to pay monthly. So, for example, I think I saw somebody was selling upticks for $500, and upticks is, a, is 150 bucks a month or 200 a month. You can buy the lifetime deal that they bought two years ago for $500. What was it originally on uh I think 129 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Here's here's the problem. If you you know when the when the software is on AppSumo, it's untested, right? Mm -hmm. And so like uh, so you're taking a real gamble. Uh, now Optics is a proven product, so yeah, so you got to be willing to uh, be a player, right? It's a bit like yeah. so many. I, I I commented yesterday when people were were trashing CanBox, and oh, it didn't do this. I'm like, guys, it's 49 dollars. And I can do 100, 150 LinkedIn connection requests automated with name, title, whatever I want for $49 a week, whatever, however many my limit is for Navigator. I, I can do tons and tons of, of automated link. What, what do you expect for $49? They were all like, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have, I'm like, guys, I mean, come on. If you, any other, any other system out there is 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks a month to do the same LinkedIn automation. Yeah, you know, if you want the, the lookups and you want the pipeline, it you have to pay more money to get it. But for 49 bucks, I can do LinkedIn automation and manage my mailbox. What more could I ask for? Okay. So it, it offers three things, but only one of those functions is really good. And it's still a great deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. In my go, opinion, in my opinion, everybody yeah, seems to want everything for nothing. And yeah, you'll go, to, you'll go to other software, other programs in order to get those other two things that it does. Uh, yeah. Octopus is yeah. 50 bucks, uh, uh, linked, linked helper, 40 bucks, right? Um, Jobin.cloud to do the same thing cost you like seventy bucks. I mean, yeah, it's it, and that's a month. This is forty nine dollars one time. Yeah, it's such a it's, it's it's. I don't. I'll go. I won't buy two bottles of rum for a month. That's <laughs> okay. No brainer, he says. No brainer, everybody. Okay, okay. Here's a question: a fee agreement. Uh, this is an interesting one as well. This uh, recruiter has uh, a new client, and uh, she sent over the fee agreement. They said, look. We want five days when you send over a candidate, we want five days to tell you whether we have this candidate or, or not. Now, she didn't say, well, we have the candidate or we're already uh, considering the candidate for this for this job. OK, they just said 
it sounded like they just want to see if they have the candidate in their applicant tracking system. If, mm -hmm. <laughs> if they haven't spoken to the person for a year and she's waking them up about the person, that's a that's ridiculous. But for, but for me, making you aware that this candidate is active and available is the only reason you're 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 resurfacing him in your applicant tracking system. Had I not brought the candidate to you, you never would have known that this candidate was willing to interview, even though he's sitting in your system. That's the but for rule. But for so so how do you how do you tell them that uh, you know, there's a, is a but for rule? There's a better way to explain it. How do you tell them that if the candidate hasn't been in, in consideration for the last five days or something like that, if it hasn't been live, so to speak? Uh, it's considered to be your candidate. If they're already considering that person, what wording do you use it's, when you tell them that? You have to you have to walk a fine line and recruiters forget about this, right? We all want to put a one year um, uh, 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 ownership, right? Yeah. On a candidate, right? I submit a candidate to your company. I have them for one year, right? And then if some recruiter, if I don't stay in contact with this candidate, right? John Smith, I, I sent him in in January. They didn't hire him or they didn't like him or whatever happened, right? Me and John didn't stay in touch. And then Animal comes along in August and recruits John Smith to the, for that same company, calls him and says, hey, would you like to talk to John Smith? And they're like, yeah, we're excited. And I jump up and down. Oh, my God, I sent you that guy. I shouldn't get paid. I'm the idiot that didn't stay in contact with my, with my client. I didn't stay in contact with the candidate. And that is my fault. Trying to lock a, a client down on that, but then saying the but for rule, you have to walk the balance. You have to figure out which one you want. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, okay, uh, you can't check your database on candidates that I may have stumbled upon that you knew about six months ago. And then also say in the other breath, any candidate I send to you, you have to pay me a fee regardless in the next year. You you, you can't do that. You have to you have to walk that fine line and figure out which, which line you want to be on. Let me put it another way. Let's say you send out a candidate and then your client gets back to you and said, yeah, I like this guy, uh, Tommy, but... Uh, you know, Rich sent us that same candidate six months ago, and you know, we forgot about him until you uh, you told us about him. But I signed a contract. Uh... Yeah, well, that's incumbent upon you. First of all, let me back up a second. When I'm interviewing a candidate, I'm going to ask him, "Where have you sent your resume? Who have you interviewed with?" Like, get all that information. They'll out. forget. They'll forget in six months. They they I, 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 it. And then the the next the next thing would be. So, so I, I just haven't had this happen very often. I actually just had it happen one time in the last like six years. Okay. And and we had the same argument. I said to them when they brought up we have them in our system. I said, and I actually called corporate and they 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 sided with me. I said, look, you had them in the system, but had no idea that this guy was active, wanting to do anything. So what you want me to do is if I find out the candidate had already interviewed with you, and you either passed on them or don't know about them, don't bring them to you because I'm not going to get paid. Right. So what I'm going to do now is if I talk to a candidate and they say, um, uh, I interviewed at that company eight months ago. Right now I'm like, okay, well, it's not that company. I, I, you have to bring them because the candidate will go around you once. Well, that's, that, that's, that's, that's when I was, and that's why I was saying, well, I'm not even going to announce who the company is. I'm going to start interviewing the candidate. I got a great opportunity. What have you, where have you been? What have you done? Have you interviewed anywhere? And if I get any notion that he may have sent his resume out, out to that client, I may say, Hey, um, do you know who it, this company is, right? I do a lot of work all over the country. It's going to make me more, um, uh, what's the word, uh, more um, cautious, circumspect, cautious, cautious, and not wanting to give candidates information. Do I make sure they didn't send their resume to that that client in the last year or anything like that, right? Okay. And, yeah. and if I find out they did, guess what, Mr. Employer, you're not getting them because I'm not getting paid. I'm that's not going to bring you clients that that's I'm not going to get paid on. That, that makes it difficult to deal with your uh, candidates and then protect yourself from the client. Yeah, it is. It's very difficult. That's why I say it's a fine line. How are you going to walk that line? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, do you want to say hey, something? Dave, David Dave, 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 I, I want to ask you. This is something that, that I, I don't know if you heard when he came on. No. We, I, as, as recruiters, I many recruiters want to have a client sign a thing that says, if you hire this candidate in the next year, I'm owed a fee. Okay. Yeah. And even if they didn't have anything to do with it, if, if eight months from now, Animal stumbles on this candidate on a different search, sends it to the client, and they totally didn't know he was in the system or forgot yeah. that I sent him or whatever, they, I still want to get paid, right? That's what a lot of recruiters want. But we yeah. also, we also as recruiters want to uh, 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 talk out of both sides of our mouth and say, okay, if I bring you a candidate that's in your database and you don't know that he's active, yeah. I should get paid too. And like, 
that's a, a struggle that I'm trying to, to, yeah, to so I don't have that problem. Usually if I had one time in six years, I was telling him, but a lot of recruiters, I hear this asked all the time. How do we balance lot. that? How do we balance that? So most, so a lot of the larger companies I work for have very robust databases. So a lot of times they have candidates that are in there, you know, and they can track back that they have them in there for five years ago, as an example. Mm -hmm. So typically there's a time frame. Like if somebody applied in the last two years and they're in the system, then you wouldn't get credit for it if they're in the system. But usually the recruiters, the recruiting firms would be able to check to see if, you know, John Smith is in the, the database or not. So you wouldn't waste your time sending John Smith. But if you found someone and they were, you know, past the two year time frame, then you would get a fee for it because they're in the database. So my, my question is, my I've always went with the but for rule. I don't care he's in your database. You have no idea that yeah. this guy is active or doing anything. He's been in there. You, you have this opening, this, this critical need. You yeah. need a mechanical engineer. You got him sitting in your database. He's been in there for two years or no, yeah. let's say 18 months, right? I am out there recruiting for you, passive candidates. I stumble on this mechanical engineer and I bring him to you and say, hey, this guy has been here. In, oh, we knew about him. How is that? You never would have fucking said anything yeah. had I not brought them to you, right? That's yeah. the balance I can't understand because recruiters want that. I want that, right? Yeah. And then but other recruiters want, well, if he's in the system, I sent him to you in the last year. Tom Malasio doesn't get a fee. No, dude. The only reason he's interviewing is because I found him. You're a dumbass yeah. recruiter. You didn't stay in touch with him. That's the well, balance that I'm concerned about. Well, let me with. note something, uh, and, and Dave can uh, uh, comment on this because he's inside. My impression is that uh, internal recruiters rarely use their uh, databases. They just go out and source uh, new on every search. And I've been told, I don't know if Dave told us that, that it's because a lot of these applicant tracking systems are not easy to search. And uh, yes. it, it, so, you know, somebody's yeah. in there, they're buried until you say, well, I'll go look up uh, Fred Mechalopoulos and, and then they'll find them after you've said that. A lot of them have very limited search capabilities. So let's say you have a resume even in there that's, I don't know, 10 years old, we'll just say. If you can't search the keywords or the contacts of the resume from the search capability, you will never know that John Smith or whatever is in the actual database. Unless you happen to stumble across them and look them up and say, oh, he's in the database. Um, I've had it on the flip side where there was a retained search firm that was, um, or I was asked to source on a position, and there was a retained search firm that was, the, the, the hiring manager decided to put a fee on. Well, I already had been sourcing on it from the get-go and ended up finding the candidate before the search firm was involved that was interviewed. And then they decided, oh, we're going to go with the search firm. And they still paid a fee for, the, and they hired the candidate that I sourced. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a story. I have a story about that too. My friend uh, had that happen and uh, he's a, a tough cookie, uh, ruthlessly unapologetic. And uh, he said, look, you owe me, just like uh, Tom said, you owe me a fee. They said, well, we've already got, uh, you know, this other uh, recruiting firm has a claim on them from, you know, 10 months ago. They ended up paying two fees. They paid my friend and they paid the other recruiter. I myself, I would tend to take the Solomonic approach. I would say, look, let's go 50-50 with that other recruiting firm. But the other recruiting firm might not agree. And yeah. let me add that this, this uh, ownership thing is not without reason because, you know, just like Tom was saying a few minutes ago, his candidate is being considered. He's good for two positions. OK, yeah. so you send him in for one position. They knock him out a month later. They've got a new job that's good for him yep. and they don't want to pay you. They want to put him in that job themselves. See, yeah. OK, because you've already so, introduced him. You've got to have some some control. Maybe six I have, months is reasonable. So a year not reasonable. I have seen a middle ground where a situation like that happened. But because the candidate was in the system, they gave them half of the fee, 50% of the fee, because the recruiting firm technically didn't get the search, right? But they hired the candidate that was presented for a different role by that firm. Okay. What was the, uh, what was the time <laughs> frame? A, a, the collateral searches are, are still the same fee for me. This is one of the reasons why I will not work with big companies with big talent acquisition teams, right? Because you start running into all this yeah, stuff. I don't think could try to cheat you like that as well. They okay. can, but the chances are it's, it's not going to happen as often. Uh, right? I think big, big, companies, big companies have uh, departments that are called, bear with me, what are they called? Uh, strategic sourcing, procurement, stuff like that. And they basically get in and man maintain and manage the contract piece and they negotiate it all for the whole company. Yeah. So a lot of times, if you're an agency recruiter, 
a lot of them will put in like vendor management systems and things like that. Those, those types of deals, if you're an agency recruiter, in my opinion, don't waste your time. It's all because transactional. It's exactly. all transactional. It's not, you lose the human element and then you're, they focus more on the, the, the fees and the cost versus the quality and the, the quality of hire, right? Which is what's more important in the long run, I think. Okay. I, no, no, I got a question though. So what's a reasonable time frame to say you own the candidate? I think six months is fair. I think of average I've seen is like, like it's always a year. A year. It's yeah, a, year. a year. Yeah. It's a year. But I, I also, if, if I screw up, right. And I, I sent a candidate in and I didn't stay in contact with him or for whatever reason. And some other recruiter finds him seven months later and puts okay. him into a different Most position or something like that. Most I don't expect to be paid. I, it's my fault. I'm a, my fault. You're a shitty recruiter for not staying in contact they with your client. They signed a with you. It's my legally opinion, binding right? That's contract. Just me. And just like you. Yeah, my contract doesn't say Most, that. My contract doesn't say anything do. about ownership. Okay, uh, I don't know. That's why well, I don't work with big companies. Good. And yeah. the reason is, Turner Construction or Centex, I can't remember, several years ago, said, we will not pay a fee for anyone we have in our system. Anyone, right? And I had, a, I had somebody, I knew somebody that sent somebody to them that was an estimator with like seven years experience. And they pulled up his college. When he graduated from college, he had sent them his resume. They use that as a way not to yeah, pay. Yeah, I wouldn't work with somebody like that. And another company, I read an article, I, quit, I went looking for it when we were doing this, said that uh, they wouldn't pay, and this was a long time ago, you're talking like 2004 or five, maybe, wouldn't pay a fee for anybody on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then they're not using any recruiters. Yeah. Okay. And today, that's the, but back then, you have to remember, back then, LinkedIn oh, wasn't okay, what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back then, yeah, that was different, a different ballgame. Yeah. We want people that aren't on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is just full of that. Like, okay, whatever. I just want to thank, uh, I want to thank, uh, it's just not over yet, but I want to thank David M. Marr. I didn't introduce him, but he manifested himself. He incarnated today just you know, to talk to us for a few minutes, and I, I appreciate that. Although he's got the same problem that Sasha had with his light coming from behind him instead of, for, so he's, his face is in shadow. Uh, Tom no way. Normally I have a filter, but I guess the filter must have gotten disabled. Okay, but yeah. Tom, Tom had that, to teach Sasha. That's been Sasha. some issues. Yeah, there's been issues on Google Meet with filters for some reason not popping up right. Okay. The three little dots in the bottom right is where you want next to the hang up button. And, and then, then click on visual effects. Yeah, see when I click on it, it says update your browser to use your visual effects. What okay. are you using? What browser? Uh, Chrome. Oh. You people in Chrome. That's a question. That's a should. That's a question I want to ask. Tommy's very big on Brave. He hates Chrome. I want to hear all about that. So basically, Chrome is a, especially on Mac is a memory hog, and it's owned by Google, and they're trying to disable ad blockers. So Brave Edge. Um, uh, there's a couple. There's another one I just tested that is uh, looks like kind of like Safari. It's called I think Orion. Opera. Maybe. What one? Opera, Mozilla, Arc, 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 Arc. Um, they, these are all Chromium based. What Chromium based means is very simple. It uses the Chrome framework, so every single Chrome extension works on it, right? I don't care what the Chrome well, extension all is. Hold on, Brave Belt can use all the Chrome extensions. Brave, Arc, um, or Bra Microsoft, Brave Belt. No, Brave, yeah, sorry. Brave, Brave Arc, Arc, Microsoft Edge. Um, there's another one. What did you say? Opera. Orion. Opera, I don't know if it's Chrome or not. Mozilla? Mozilla is not. Mozilla is its own proprietary. But Mozilla is good too. I would use Mozilla if I could get the, and there is a workaround with a, um, with either HTML or some weird shit you have to do. You, you know, I got work. rid of uh, Brave and then after, yeah, years ago, and then after you were talking it up again, I downloaded it again. And so you, it, I didn't know that it can use all the Chrome extensions. I, I mean, if, you, if I share you my screen, you can see right now, here, look, I'm on Brave. Um, where's your picture? Let's I'll do this one here. I'm on Brave and look at my Chrome extensions, right? Uh, all these, these are all Chrome extensions. Now, can you import those directly or do you have to re-click every no, single No, you can you can report you can import them and also for those listening, get extensity. Yep, I was extensity just gonna say that allows you to turn on and off Chrome extensions. See yep. the ones that are grayed out, they're all off right now. I've got that. And I can turn them on real quickly. So more. yeah, I'm telling you, man. The, there's the, the you can look here how much um, memory usage 418 megabytes. You get the memory usage of each tab. Um, the the the, uh, 
uh, privacy is better than Chrome. And I use ad blocker. I've, I've not seen an ad on YouTube, Reddit, any of that stuff for the longest time. Okay. So since we're talking about this, maybe the last thing should be SSAR. Okay. Dean is famous start for me, baby. That's start me, start, startme.com. Okay. And, uh, uh, Tom is raving about it. So I've, I, I went to it myself and like I had a, I already had an account because uh, I got it when Dean was uh, promoting it, right? And uh, this is Dean's right here. Here's Dean's. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is, just like you said, I so I started up my account and I could link directly from uh, to mine to Dean's, and I linked to yours. I put yep. links in the in the uh, in the bookmarks bar. There's um, mine. Yeah. And you said you don't use bookmarks anymore. You you use this, right? Yeah. And this is the AI when, um, yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I still have bookmarks across the oh, top. Oh, I linked you know? to your, yeah, you told us about this, this AI. This is the AI one. one, yeah, that's really good. He's got OSINT and crypto and blockchain, which I don't really, but the, the chat OSINT. GPT stuff he put on is really, really good. His, he also has uh, sourcing links, which is another the, the one. The Yeah. Yeah, DaCosta's sourcing links is... I don't know where his source. Do you have the sourcing links up, somebody? Yeah, he's got. got it. He, he's he's got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop. There you go. Um, are you sharing? No, I'm not sharing. It's in the okay. it's in the chat. So oh, there it is, right there. There's the sourcing links, and you ha there's a bunch of different levels that you can do, right? So I'm the free version because I'm cheap. But the silver and bronze and the gold and the platinum. Well, you're not really cheap. Really, you buy tools. Obviously, you don't think yeah. sourcing links is worth twenty dollars a month. Oh, it's just I mean it is. I just haven't got around to doing it. So as you see, like what you get, like in the platinum, like how much stuff you get um, for finding email addresses for doing. Uh, he 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 makes all these different bullion tools that are in there and bullion searches and whatnot. So yeah, he's, he's really to, on it. Could, could you go to sourcing links and get an account with him and not pay LinkedIn? Could that replace LinkedIn? So my, my, and Dave, you can comment as too. My reason, I will always pay for LinkedIn because I don't want to end up in LinkedIn jail. I feel like if you pay the $79 for Navigator, uh -huh. you can scrape, you can do all, use all those, the Chrome well, extensions and all within that. Within reason. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes if you scrape too much, they will still put you in jail. And if you go to jail more than once, will they kick you off? Um, I've been in jail probably three or four times. Oh, really? You know, there's a Bob Dylan song, I've been in jail, where all the mail shows in a man. I've not been in jail yet. But that's typically when you're using tools that, or if you open too many profiles too fast. Yeah. Which the first time I learned that when I was scraping, I was like, oh, okay. So then yes. there is, I used, it used to be when I used a tool called Zap Info uh -huh. that is no longer. Um, and it was great. It would basically, you'd do a search in Google. You'd x-ray LinkedIn and then you'd basically go through all the profiles and then it would pull all their social media presence and put it all in the one profile. Then you could export it into an Excel or put into an Excel format and then upload it into your CRM or ATS. Oh, that's nice. What was that called? It was called Zap Info. It's gone. The tool's no longer though. Okay, but I got a quick question. I saw someone raving about Send Grid. Send Grid. Anybody familiar with that? It's an email S sending program, and it staggers the email so that you don't get uh, blacklisted for over, you know, for spammy. Nobody, nobody's familiar with it. Eh? Send grid. So okay. I think I do a search, and what it will do is you can come up here and populate all of these, right? So if you if you have a bullion search you want to do, you put all the bullion in here, hit populate all, and then you can search one at a time and see what you get. Same with email addresses; it gives you a couple places to find emails. You put in. The person's name and it'll look for you right um real names usernames telephone numbers right you can do a reverse phone number search so we put in my number see what it does it's 702 all right oops very reasonably priced but i don't see people talking about it a lot then you click on it, this one and it'll see if it can find whatever info about me and then you can come over here and click caller smart right so it'll just walk you through right you know, there it is. It's a Vero Beach, Florida number. And because you have to pay for this, it's not going to tell you my information. Right. So some of them are bad. Some of them are bad gateways. Um, people search. I think that's free. So there you go. There you go. It says that I live here, which I don't. But that's because my, my driver's license is attached to that. But that's my current address. 
that's my old address in Florida. That's how old I am. Um, that's my wife. Uh, that's my daughter. That's my mother, but she's deceased. And that's my sister. So, you know, real quick, you can look up a phone number. And then that's how all of them work on the sourcing link, right? So whether you do images, documents, uh, you know, everything, it's all there. And then when you pay for the big one, right? Like um, here's the x-ray and search, but when you pay for the other one, it's like 30 of these blocks or 40 of these blocks. But now I can put in, you know, um, engineer and steel and civil and spell engineer, right? And then when you populate them all, oops, then you can do an x-ray or zoom search or rocket reach, wherever, right? You can just look, I'm gonna do this one, LinkedIn x-ray, and it does this, right? So I get these guys and then I can come back, okay, that wasn't enough, I'll come to Instagram x-ray, what does that give me, right? And they give me Instagram profiles, right? So it's, it's a quick way to do Boolean searches, to look up a phone number, instead of going from tab to tab to tab, right? And then when you pay for it, it's even better. Okay. Okay. Anybody else got any other issues? Because we're running out of time. Anybody? No? Nope. Tommy needs to wear one of the animal hats, too. Okay. okay. I'll find an animal hat. <laughs> I, I, I want to. I wanna... You should patent. You should make some merch, animal. Yeah. You know what? Who's going to buy <laughs> it? Okay. I'll, I'll be sending it out for free to get. Yeah. People like, I, I, you know, I've told you many times. I think this is a unique show. I think it's great. Uh, other people just not interested. And I thought before it was because it was just too long to listen to, but I've cut out so many links, little clips, and they're not interested in that either. So for a decent reason, engagement. You get some decent engagement. The show uh, uh, appeals to me, but uh, not to a wide audience. And you guys, I'm happy that you come. I really enjoy talking with you. Tommy, I don't know why it says Thommy, okay? Thomas, okay, put that in, but not Tommy. Change it to Tommy, okay? It's because of my show, uh, the Recruiting Roundtable. There's another, uh, we have another Tom, right? So I don't, uh, it, it was easier. Well, once to you're in the Tommy territory, does he call himself Tommy? You don't need no, he that. He calls himself Tom. He calls himself Tom. Everybody calls me Tommy. Okay. So you don't need the H for Tommy, okay? Anyway, this guy. Tommy Gunn Alasio. Tommy Pistachio Alasio. <laughs> Come on, wake up, David and Mario. You've oh, been I'm here sorry. long enough. Pistachio. Alashio, okay. Tommy Pistachio Alashio. Okay. And the great David M. Marr, back in heaven. But thanks for coming down and speaking to us. I'll see you guys again.